that we accept the sinfulness of people and not to be affected by them. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart, is, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. So all people are sinful, are deceitful and desperately wicked. So we accept that. But some people, their sins are more obvious that we can see their sins easily because they just expose all the sins. Then we just say, that's how it is. It doesn't matter. I can turn it off. When we can turn it off, then we can have more joy in life. Then we can enjoy life more. <clears throat> okay, and motivate people to take care of personal problems. In Psalm 37, verse 7, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret. When people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes, Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. So even when some wicked people, they are doing well, in our heart, we don't get frustrated and we don't let anger and frustration uh, stay in our heart. Do not fret. Do not let this anger stay in us and just take it peacefully. God has planned great blessings for us. No one can take away His blessings except ourselves. So if I don't get hurt by the person, I just take away the hurt feelings, then I can be blessed by God from now on. So I would just say, doesn't matter. I put it down. I don't have to be affected by Him. God has great blessings for me. I don't have to be hurt by people. And then we can tell ourselves, we can do this, we can say, you know, this person is treating me, is mistreating me, but I have victory over him by not being hurt by him. And God is happy with me now. God is smiling at me. God is happy with me. So I can be happy because I can overcome this problem. If someone is wicked, it is their problem. If I'm affected by Him, I will lose God's blessing. So if I'm affected by Him, <clears throat> then I'll lose the blessing of God. I don't want to lose the blessings of God. So I want to learn not to be affected by Him. I want to learn to just enjoy God. Now, if we don't take care of our problems, our personal problem, this is the warning, James 1.19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So when people have frustration, they're very angry with us. We still want to listen. Sometimes, you know, if we listen and respond to a right way, the person can... Um, he can become more peaceful. If we said, uh, for instance, someone is very angry, um, we did something wrong, and then, and then we say this to him, I'm sorry, I know what I did make you angry. Now this is a word of wisdom. This is word of wisdom that we say to a person, yes, it is me, what I did make you unhappy. I'm sorry about that. I want to work on that. Then. We're listening to the person. The person is unhappy because of a problem. And we name it. And we name his feeling. For instance, we'll say, I know you're very unhappy because you've tried so many times and you still fail. So if the person tries to do something and he fails, and then you just name it and say, I know you're trying to work, to make it work and it doesn't work. And so you're very unhappy. So we name it and then the person feels being understood by us, and then their anger will go down. Now, even for a, a drunkard, now of course when he's drunk, we cannot do much. Uh, what we can do is like this. If he's drunk, we'll say, okay, um, at this point you are very unhappy and uh, you're, you're drunk, maybe uh, you take a sleep now. You go to sleep now, that would be better. So, uh, 
to calm him down as much as possible. Um, I, can I get you some warm water? Can I get you some food so you can sleep? So we say things to show, to show our love and care for the person. That will calm him down. That is wisdom. But some people might say, that's unfair. He's, he's, he is drunk and then, and then I have to treat him well. <clears throat> I want to say this is victory. When, he treat, when we treat him well, this is victory. So hope we learn to, to have victory over people by being gentle and kind and loving. Now after they wake up, that we can talk to them. Sometimes we can talk to them. Some people talking doesn't help. But we can say, um, maybe you're unhappy, you were unhappy and then you went to drink and um, uh, you know, I, what can I do to help you to be happier? Or we just do it, you know, we just do it. Um, you know, I like to help you to be happier and uh, uh, can I prepare some food for you and so we can enjoy the food. So we take away the anger and treat him nicely. Then there is a slight possibility he might improve. Now he might not improve immediately, but we say, okay, I, at least I try to be kind to him that maybe there's a chance he will improve. There's a slight chance. It takes effort. Okay, and then uh, so God blesses everyone who seeks God's righteousness. So, you know, uh, if we, you know, we seek the holiness of God, then God blesses us. That when we obey God, then God is happy with us and God will bless us. And then, um, if people get angry and hurt other people, <clears throat> they are not seeking God's righteousness, they will lose God's blessing. So we understand that they are, they are losing God's blessing, but we try to help them. The meek shall inherit the earth. So when, they, when people are gentle, they will inherit the earth. They will inherit blessings from God. So it's better, it's better strategy to be gentle. Excuse me for a moment. Okay, when pe <clears throat> what people say just stay in the air for one second. So that's one teaching that God has given me. When people say something roughly, impolitely, with anger, what they say just stay in the air for one second. We don't have to take it internally. We don't have to take the negative words seriously. God will bless us when I obey Him. So when I don't take His negative words and just trust in God, God is very happy with me. And clear that negative words from our mind and fill ourselves with God's Word. So we, if someone says something negative and hurtful, we just say, it doesn't matter. I don't have to take it seriously. I just don't think about it and then I can I can have more peace and I can pray to God and I have more peace and joy and then I won't be affected by Him. Okay, and then <clears throat> we need to learn to clear 
We need to learn to clear all the garbage from people and ourselves. So how people hurt us and criticize us, we need to clear the garbage. And how we dislike and despise ourselves. Sometimes we dislike ourselves. We, we say, oh, I'm not doing well. And then we dislike ourselves. So we put down all those negative feelings toward ourselves. And how we criticize ourselves and have no hope. Sometimes people have negative thoughts about themselves and have no hope. We need to clear all this so that our mind is filled with blessings from God. It's filled with good things. So then fill ourselves with God's word and love. And God loves us all the time. And, you know, Christianity is about God loving us. For God so loved the world. But many Christians just live under the law. They don't have, you know, they don't live in the love of God. They know the love of God, but then they just say that is for the beginning when we believe in Jesus. And after that, it's all work. Then it's, you know, then it's heavy. But whatever we do, we know God is happy. And it's God motivating me. And God loving me, motivating me to change. And God is pleased with what I do. Then we can be very, very happy all the time. So we, um, instead of uh, criticizing ourselves or just having heavy responsibilities all the time, we say, I enjoy God. God gives me strength. God is with me. I enjoy God. It's so wonderful to have God. Hallelujah. That way, then we'll have strength all the time and don't take the garbage of people. Five steps to victory. <clears throat> God gave me this teaching. Now look at the five key words. Aware of how we are affected by people or of any sin and believe that it's destructive. Now five steps of, to victory is uh, applicable to any kind of problem, to sin or any negative thinking, uh, negative feelings or being affected by people. Aware of how we are affected by people, believe that when we are affected by people, it is destructive and apply biblical principles to the problem. What does the Bible tell me to do? The Bible tells me to, uh, to forgive, to overcome wickedness with goodness, with kindness. So to be nice to people, that's what the Bible says. To love your enemy. And then pray to have forgiveness and strength. To God, pray to God to, uh, that He will forgive us and give us strength. And then choose to obey God. Choose not to be affected by people. Choose not to take people's words seriously when it's negative. So we can overcome sins by stopping the sinful thoughts before they become action. So we might be angry with someone and then we take care of that. We know that anger will cause destruction. The anger will bring more problem. The anger will bring, you know, uh, more problem in the family and the family will fall apart. So instead of being angry, I choose to uh, trust in God. I don't have to take His words seriously. I ask God for wisdom, how to talk to Him. And then I talk to Him gently. And then if He's calmed down, I have victory. Now even if He's not calmed down, at least I did not make him more angry. So I'm, in a way, I'm uh, having victory already. So we can tell ourselves I'm having victory. Okay, now we go to this part, how to build a relationship with children. Now, before I go on, move on, I want to say something about my experience in Africa. I ate with some families and I noticed that it's always the men eating together and the, the wife and the children, they all eat in the kitchen. And I asked the husband, why is that so? He said, that's how it is in Africa, that the women and the children will eat in the kitchen. And then the men would eat in the uh, uh, in a dining room or in just in the main room they have in the house. And uh, I said, during the time, the meal time is a good time for communication. It's a good time to build up the relationship with the wife and the children. Without the meal time, 
You know, when the husband comes home, uh, he has worked for the full day and then come home, and then he eats just with the men in the family, and then the women stay in the kitchen with the children. Then the wife never hear words of comfort or encouragement from the husband. Then it's just work, all day long work. And then when it's meal time, then she just eat with the children, uh, and then uh, and then she has to wash dishes. So it's all day work for the women. I said that doesn't, you know, that's not the biblical model. The biblical model is that the husband will love the wife as Christ loves the church. Christ loves the church and spend time with the church. So husbands should spend time with the wives and the children to love the children. And then the children will grow up to be loving adults. So I hope we we'll all see the importance of loving relationship. Now Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, you know, I knock at your door and then he who hears me and open the door, I'll come in with him and dine with him. So Jesus wants to dine with us, to eat with us, to spend time with us. So it's, of course, it's a description of the relationship of God with us. That is a friendly relationship. It's an enjoyable relationship. So I hope that we see that, oh, the time with the wife and the children uh, are important, okay? So as far as uh, building up relationship with the children, first set a good example to our children. First Peter 5, 3, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. So our wife and our children are our flock too, that we take care of them too. So we show example of how we love God and obey God, that they will see that we love God and obey God. And they will see how we treat people. The children will see how, how we treat the wife, how we treat each other. And then in the future, they will treat the, their wife and the, or the husband or the children like that too. So our example is very important. <clears throat> so I hope that we don't let culture take away the biblical teaching. Jesus warned against the Jews because they used tradition to cancel the teaching of God. We want to use the teaching of God to cancel some unbiblical traditions. So I hope when you hear this, when you go home, the whole family should eat together. And then, now if you say, well, my dining room is not large enough, then what you do is <clears throat> one day you, you eat with some members and then some other members eat in, uh, in another room, but you switch so that you eat with different members different times. That way, that the time of eating is important. Now also, <clears throat> in some family, it's like this. Only the adults talk. The children listen only. <coughs> now in a family, if only adult, the adults talk and the children only listen, what happens is the children don't learn to talk well. Now I have come across some children who are very expressive because the parents talk with them all the time and they learn to be expressive. Now for myself when I was young uh, at the dining table it's only the parents talk and then what we say did not count. So I did not learn to talk in the, when I was young. So I actually had problem communicating with people. It's only when I went to church when I was 19 and I noticed how the people pay attention to me when I talk. I, I was greatly impressed because when I was at home the people don't, didn't pay attention when I talk. So I was impressed with that and then I learned to communicate with people, talk with people, and of course not just in the church later. <coughs> in the training I had that I had learned to communicate with people and also from my marriage I learned to communicate more. 
So that's something we learn uh, when we talk with people. So I hope that that we, our example of talking with our children, they would learn from us, and they also learn to talk. Now, if they don't learn to talk, what problem? The problem will uh, will affect them in the future. Now, what problem? When they don't have the chance to talk in the family, when they talk, the parents don't listen to them, don't pay attention to what they say. What happens is, they just look for people to listen to them. And when they come across any, you know, when a, a, a boy come across a girl that listen to him, then he will say, wow, this is the best of my world. This girl listened to me and then then he will fall in love easily without thinking whether this person is suitable for him. That one day when he come across the person of the opposite sex, they will be attracted instantly by the person, no matter how bad the person is. But when the person listens to him or her, then he would, uh, would really be attracted. So they, have, they don't have the ability to discern what kind of person that is. But if we um, have good examples with our children to, that we talk with uh, the spouse and talk with them, and also we can help them to grow in wisdom, to discern people, to discern what kind of people are good Christians, what kind of uh, Christians are weak Christians, that they are not, that the life doesn't show the life of Christ. And also for non-Christian, how the life is, how sin is showing in their life, so they know how to discern. Now, I'm not talking about being critical. I'm talking about being able to discern and know that people have problems. Then they're not easily attracted by people with problems. Because when people want to chase after a girl, they will always uh, always want to be nice and then this girl thinks that this guy is very nice to her okay so how we love God and obey God how we treat people how we manage our thinking and emotions so if the adults cannot manage their emotions the children will also do the same thing if we uh, fight and yell in front of them they will also fight and yell and then how we use our lives that's uh, do we use our life for God and build up the friendship with the children. Spend time with them. Listen to their feelings and their, and their needs. And respond to them and feel the feelings. And rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So we rejoice with them. When they do something well, we, we're happy. And then we, we praise them. Wow, you're doing something very well. Now some people think that <clears throat> To praise the children would spoil them. Actually, it won't. When we praise them for what they do right, it will encourage them to do right again. So we should praise them for what they do well. And then we tell them, this is very good that you treat people nicely. So we tell them that. Avoid hurting children's feelings. Colossians 3.21 Fathers do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged because if we provoke them they will discourage they will be discouraged we don't have to hurt their feelings when we teach them when we teach them teach them and in a, with grace your life is precious do you tell your children that? your life is precious you become important people you can bless many people you can do great things with, uh, with your life and, and then, now you're improving. Uh, what you're doing is very, is very good. And then when they do something wrong, then we, we, we ask them, okay, uh, is your life very precious? You will say yes, and then you will say, well, uh, think about what you did just now. W would that make your life uh, become greater and greater? Uh, and then they will respond, well, no. Then you ask them, then what can you do? How can you take care of their problem? So we, we guide them to understand the, what behavior is good and what behavior is problematic. And we don't have to make them fear us. You know, some parents make the children fear them 
so that they will obey. We don't have to. We tell them, when you obey me, when I have reasons that you should obey, then you're obeying God also. So we, we, uh, we want to be reasonable with the children. And, and then they would see that we are friendly, loving. Just like when we see God, God is friendly and loving. Um, it's only people who live under the law that they say, Oh, I'm afraid of God. Now, the Bible says fear God. It means honor God. It doesn't mean, Oh, I'm afraid of God. I don't, I don't dare to pray to Him. That's not what it means. It's I honor God so that I don't dare to sin. That's what it means. And then we want them to trust us just as the Heavenly Father helps us to trust Him. So what we do is trustworthy and then so that they will trust us. How to communicate with children? Treat them with love and respect and build up trust relationship with them. Do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Appreciate their strengths. Guide them to treasure themselves. They are precious. Guide them to experience God. Pray lay hand on them to, for them to experience the Holy Spirit and ask them did they experience anything if they do we tell them this is experiencing God so when you pray more you experience Him more and you'll be blessed by God more guide them to have hope in life that they will see life positively guide them to make the best of their life you can become a great person guide them to have the motivation to learn more things to improve their life So here I respond uh, to the situation in Africa. Should fathers and mothers and children eat separately? That here Jesus said, I'll dine with him and he with me. So dining is a time to communicate. Dining is a time to build relationship. Dining is a time enjoying life together. Dine, dining is a time influencing the family. Dining is a time to talk about issues. So that's that's important. Okay, now I want to say something more. What if the children have problem? Now, if we love the children and guide them uh, to enjoy God, enjoy our relationship, and then to believe to believe that their life is precious, uh, if they obey God, if they study, if they uh, treat other people nicely, they are building up their life. They are finding the purpose in life. When we build up their life from infancy, <clears throat> even when they were babies, now don't think that babies don't understand. You know, they might not understand the words at the beginning, but they will begin to understand. They understand our body language. They understand love. So you notice that the infants will respond to the one who loves him most. So we, we want to love the, the, the baby and always be kind to them and build them up. Now what if they disobey? Then we ask them, okay, um, is your life precious? And do you want to make the best of, of your life? Do you want to become a great person? Now we can tell them examples of people who are great people. These people, you know, they make the best of their life and their life go better and better and better. And so do you want to be like them? And God bless them. So uh, from childhood, we teach them this, so they understand this. And then when they do anything wrong, we, we ask them, okay, what you did, uh, how would it affect your life? So we ask them. And then they understand this. And then when they do wrong again, we'll ask them, okay, so what do you think this would do to your life? We don't have to yell at them. We just ask them. We just say it gently. And then we can teach them also. They can think about their life and then you know, they can say, okay, I'm sorry I did that. I want to pay attention to, uh, to that. I don't want to commit that sin again. So that's something we can help them to grow, to uh, overcome the problems. For instance, if they have bad habits or sins, then we ask them, okay, uh, when you, when you do, uh, when you did that, what do you think how that would affect your life? And then uh, help them to repent of their sins and help them to understand when we sin, it will hurt the relationship with God, it will hurt um, 
your future and the plan of God in your life. But if from childhood you love God and obey God and make the best of your life and, and study well and learn things well, then your life will go higher and higher. You become a great person. And now what you do, would it hurt you? Would it affect your life? And then if he understand that, then he learn to have individual thinking. Then he can think individually. Yes, if I do something wrong, I know it hurts my life. So we first understand this. When we make the best of our life, we will benefit from it. But if we don't make the best of our life, we'll, uh, we'll suffer from it. So we understand this. So we make the best of our life by doing things right and treating people nicely and loving people and be kind to people and build up people. And when the children learn this, they also will say, I'm precious. So every day, assure them again, you're very precious. You can do great things for God. So you want to do greater things for God. So we encourage them to, to trust in God and have a good relationship with God so that they will take care of their problems as soon as the problems appear. For instance, one problem in, in many countries, <coughs> I don't know whether it happens in Africa or not. Many children in many countries, they just spend time playing with the cell phone and playing uh, games and, uh, uh, in the cell phone. And what happens is they, they lose interest in studying. So for something like that, we ha the children have to have the understanding that life is very important. If we can show them example of people, how they just you know, play games all the time and they don't study well and then their life is ruined and they cannot do anything great in the future. So do you want to be like that? Now, for now, when you play with the games, it, 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 you, know, you feel good. But then in the future, you regret it. So we let them understand. We ask them questions. So how would it affect you? And how can you discipline yourself? So learning to discipline uh, themselves when they were young, that learn not to play games all the time. And actually the best is that they don't play games at all. When they don't play games with a cell phone, then they don't have this temptation. So first they don't play games. Now if they do play, then they have to discipline themselves to play less and do physical exercise instead of games in a cell phone. Physical exercise will have health benefit and also interactive uh, benefit will interact with other people. Uh, so sports will help him to interact with people or, or other kind of interactive uh, exercise. So um, I hope that you uh, find a way to educate your children. If your family have, you know, have been having dinner separately, uh, the adults and the children, uh, the men, men and the women. I hope you change this and pray to God for guidance in your family. Okay, we'll, we'll stop here and then if you have a question, you can ask me. Okay, let's have a prayer. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. Please help us to treasure our marriage, treasure our children, treasure our spouse, that we are all important in your sight. Lord, help us to make the best of our marriage and make the best of our family, that what we do to them is beneficial to them, we'll build them up, that we are tending the flock that are entrusted to us, that we're building up the family, that they all become people who love God and can discipline themselves. Help us not to discipline our children with just with the law, but with teach them with grace, to motivate them with grace. Father, be with us, give us the motivation and help us to enjoy life and enjoy God. 